How do we go from a pig in the pasture to this delicious home cured and smoked bacon? Two weeks ago, we showed you how we process one of the pigs on the farm and place some pork loin and streaky belly in brine in preparation for bacon. We also placed a whole leg of ham in the brine to have at Christmas time with our families. We wanted something better to smoke our bacon and ham in than the basic contraption we previously made. Troy had an idea to make a custom barbecue using salvage materials from the local tip, our neighbour and around the property. This is so amazing. What do you think? Thank you, ready. <laughs> Remember when we went to the tip and we got that old LPG um, fuel tank out of a car? That's this. Um, and this bit here is an old... Um, oh yeah, one of those. A household gas bottle. Yeah. The lid here, um, an old brake drum. Oh, right that's what it is. Yeah, so I've been, I've been hanging on to them and, and seeing, um, seeing if I can find a use for them. Yep. This and that came from the old broken um, uh, fork handle that's been laying around. Mm -hmm. I was going to make it into a garden dibber, mm -hmm. but now we've got a nice handle for our smoker, mm -hmm. which is smoking. Um, and this as well. And I oiled that with linseed, so it looks really... It does look nice. Tripod design, so it's always self-leveling, just because wherever we might want to have it, four legs might not work that well. So we did have to buy some stuff for this. Okay, what did we buy? We had to buy some welding rods, yep. one packet, and we had to buy these hinges. <laughs> <laughs> Our neighbour gave us a nice heavy nut and bolt that I can use for the hinge for the door. Ooh. And um, again, I've used like a 
up here on the smoke control, mm -hmm. that's also just just a um, just a, a nut and a bolt. Yeah, was that just because you're finding bits of that, That's just stuck in the in the mm -hmm. shed. So mm -hmm. what, what was the total cost then? Mm, Nine dollars. Nice. <laughs> it's so pro. It came up all right, and it, <laughs> even um, this black is not the black of the steel. This black is. I did find also some. Um, pot belly stove paint. Right. So it's a, a heat proof enamel. I did actually have some trouble welding this and I spoke later on um, with Peter, my friend from, our friend from Tassie. Mm. And what I didn't do properly, um, bad workmanship really, is I didn't clean enough of the galvanizing off these when I welded this on. Yeah. So if you have a look, you know, you can see all these pinholes and it looks, weld. Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty bad. When I was cutting this, I made a cut and then welded those on and then made another cut and then welded that and the result is that this is a, a nice tight interference fit. Yep. Um, if, you, if you just let it sit there it will smoke like crazy but if you actually jam it down it's, it's not too bad. So there's no flame control at this end, it's just the, the, um, the stud pack holes for the brake rotor mm -hmm. allows airflow and then we just control that by... Oh up here. Yeah, so that'll kind of ease off the airflow going through the unit so you can see all the smoke backs up in here and it just woo, it's ham time <laughs> for a shelf where is it so, oh, let's start getting it coated in smoke <laughs> so the inside of this has got a bit of rust but once we um once we smoke a few things and particularly I might spray the inside with that canola oil mm. um, and then the heat might polymerize it onto the cooking chamber. Yep. Are you happy? I am. Are you? Yeah, yeah. This I'm looking forward to cool. um, that. So we needed this, we needed a smoker because we promised our families a Christmas ham. In the, um, in the vertical smoker, what we found was that one end was close to the heat source um, and it wasn't great and Pasky couldn't put a glaze on. It had to be done um, afterwards. But in this way we can lay a um, a ham. Would we also we had to burn it gas as well for that one. That's instead true. Instead of using wood around the property. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's true. So this one will be a nice horizontal. We can fit a whole ham in there horizontally. Um, it can be basted, and we can go for it. There's lots of things like um, brisket, just other pork roasts. You can't do them hanging. You have to do them horizontal. So yeah, yeah. Um, adding to the steampunky locomotive look, um, this was all the takeoffs for the fuel and the, the gauges and stuff like that. So we, of course we just cut all that stuff off um, and I used the whole sort of cut some discs and just welded them on. Again, that was before I was um, you know, grinding off the galvanising but these didn't come up too bad. So they're alright. And of course where, the, um, where the, the carry rings of a gas bottle go, those bits. Um, yeah, that's cut, cut off and I could have ground them fair, but actually I like the look of it. <laughs> it just looks like someone's just made something in their backyard out of gas bottles. I've seen barbecues like this in the States a fair bit. In Australia what we call a barbecue is, in other parts of the world is called a grill. You know, we've got a f fire coming up through a grill and um, cooking stuff. Whereas Australians are only just sort of twigging onto a slow cooked uh, US style, <laughs> a US style barbecue. Um, where it's a, you can cook something for 10 hours and that's we were kind of interested in experimenting with that so I guess you can buy these for about somewhere between four and six hundred dollars or a Kamado for two grand but um, yeah nine bucks yeah well it looks it looks worth a lot <laughs> you done good we if you don't the, look too close at the welds <laughs> yeah and we had the pleasure of um, pulling stuff out of the tip which yeah. is a hobby and making it ourselves, which yeah. is really nice. Well, it's baking smoking time now. We're putting aside other chores. Um, at the moment, if you have a look in here, I'm just trying to get a bed of coals up so the fire's raging. Like We couldn't we couldn't throw bacon in there at the moment. It'd just come out <laughs> black and, and crisped. Um, but you can see that if we do shut the, um, shut the door here, we can damp down the amount of air going down. And you see that the, the smoke starts to chill out a little bit. I mean, the fire starts to chill out a bit. Then we get this smoke. And then, of course, as that starts to develop, we can shut the door, and that, that actually seals quite well. And you knock it down like that, and then we can look up here on the chimney, um, and the smoke is really starting to crank. Um, at the moment, we're using Jarrah. So that's just a local eucalypt hardwood. We try not to have any bark or sapwood, um, you know, any, any green stuff in there. 
So I just found a nice big branch that fell off a tree late, just recently um, cut it up and I've just split that into small bits that will go up um, and I can just add bits and pieces as I go. It's really good being able to use fallen branches. Um, yeah, people in Western Australia, if you haven't tried Jarrah, um, you would think, oh, it's a eucalyptus, it's going to be really horrible. But the, the hardwood is, it's really nice smoke. And it's, it's smoke for, we found that it's good for white meat and, and red. Um, it hasn't been too overpowering. We really, we really cranked it. <laughs> this, is, this is no good. I'm constantly chasing animals out of here and um, whinging dogs. Hey, I'm talking about you. Constantly chasing chooks, goats and everything else out. And now, um, now one of the goats has decided this is such a nice safe space that she's decided to park her little kid here while she goes and has, uh, has a feed with her sister. This kid's a day old. A day old and she's, uh, she's left it in my care. That's all right, we'll smoke some bacon and we'll leave it alone. So this is our bacon, we've got like a streaky belly section and a loin, loin section. Um, yeah, I don't know how long it'll take to smoke them. Maybe we'll just smoke them for like 40 minutes to an hour. It's quite low temperature that we smoke them at, like probably 100, and, 100 to 120 degrees Celsius. And uh, yeah, we'll just smoke them until they get a nice colour and they look like the outside smoked. Mm -hmm. i put this bit in. Um, Maybe put this bit in here or this end. Oh, I don't, I reckon just one at a time. I know, but I've got a little tiny bit as well. Oh, okay. Which I'll put at the start. Mm -hmm. Ah, mm, it's so smoky. There we go. Oh, actually, I might just move that a little bit away from the heat source. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, moving as far as you can. Oh. Right. <laughs> I think it's ready. It's definitely ready. Are you able to touch it? Should be able to. <laughs> that looks good. Oh, that's a nice side there. That looks really, really good. And this fit looks pretty good too. Back on, y'all. Coming right up. Need to put more wood on, hey? Mm Well, all the smoking went um, went really great. It is it is pretty smoky. I think some people might be like, oh, it's a bit too smoky, but for us, it's really great. So what we got is some really nice product. We got some- um, It doesn't actually look very good in here. <laughs> <laughs> the, we'll show you once, once it's in Back the bag. Sealed, and it, really, yeah. it will look really great. Yeah. So, but nice fatty bacon. We got some uh, loin stuff. It already looks nice. That's, that's, that's starting to here. look good. That's, yeah. that's almost like speck which um, sort of sings out to my Austrian blood. Yeah, this one does taste a lot like speck. So what we did is it was quite smoky. The bits that were quite smoky, we just took the skin off that was most exposed to the smoke. We just cut that off and that really helped. Um, and we've also sliced it, not super thick, but not super thin. So yeah. It's no, like it's, it's like... A meal, would you say? No, two meal? 
Yeah, an eighth of an inch. Yeah. With um, back sealing, a little, a little tip that we can sort of pass on if people haven't really thought much about it. A lot of time you'll have um, bags, you can either make bags, you have the pre-made ones. We found that if you fold it down, um, fold it down like that before you pack it, this remains clean because the biggest uh, the biggest drama when you put these in a back sealing machine to, to seal them is that there'll be a little, little bit it. there um, and it, it stops with the sealing process. Yeah. So it does two things. It, it keeps that clean so it's a, a, a nice seal, but also it gives you some indication of, you know, so you don't over the size, bag. you don't put too much in. Uh -huh. Yeah, so exactly as, right. as it's approaching and then you can fold it. So one person's always gonna have sort of a bit dirtier hands than the other person. If you're lucky enough to be doing it with two people, one person can be loading and mucking around with the food, they get more greasy if it's bacon. <laughs> yeah, the other person, is which is me, fatty. gets to stay nice and clean. <laughs> so that's a, that's a little thing. Um, and it's been pretty good. We went with back sealing because it's the best way to avoid freezer burn and it preserves the food um, fairly well. On the boat, we, we weren't into it because um, I, I just didn't like the use of single-use plastics, but <laughs> pasky has gone out of her way and she's actually found reusable um, sealer bags. Yep. So once we're done with these, uh, you know, we'll, we'll lose that much, but then we can keep Here's using some. We've already we, used. Yeah, we used and we're going to go again. reuse it. So if you are into back sealing, just know that there is reusable bags. You, you may already know this. Um, so that's really, really great. Um, all right, enough chat. I'm going to back seal these. My mouth is watering as I'm talking. <laughs> no, I can smell delicious. this bacon. It's outrageous. We've already had dinner, so we're not hungry. It just oh, smells good. It's so crazy. Check the seal. Yeah, really great. So we like this machine because it, it does give us a, a triple seal. Um, it's fantastic. So obviously we'll cut as close as we can next time and we'll be sealing there. So the bag just gets a bit too small until it's unusable. We've been, we've been trying to be fairly meticulous about um, writing the date and what it is in here, but this is pretty straightforward. And to be honest, the bacon's not going to last that long. We're going to go through a hell of a lot of it. This is almost currency. Of, you could just about get jobs done with this stuff. Yeah. Um, but it is handy to write the date up here. We also don't label below the ceiling mark. So once you cut that off, it's gone. If you wrote all across here, then of course it's going to be there for the next year. Yeah, for the next use, yeah. Amazing. Just about to pull out the ham uh, from this bin here that's been brining in 20 litres of brine for two weeks. Uh, it's going to be hopefully a Christmas ham if it all works out. So far, so good. I'm going to rinse it in this cold water here and then dry it off and then we're just going to let it um, dry a little more in the fridge for a couple of days before we smoke it in the smoker. So the ham smells really, really great. It had The brine had sugar and salt, um, some curing salt as well to keep that pink colour when we smoke it. Um, and then it also had, we put some aromatics in, so we put black pepper, garlic, bay leaves, I think that's about it, juniper berries. So yeah, it's got a really nice smell, so I'm hoping it's going to be really delicious at Christmas time. Yeah, so I'm just giving it a bit of a trim, there was a bit, a bit of dangly skin here, which no one's going to eat because we're going to remove the skin anyway when we glaze it at Christmas time. The steps are remove the leg from the pig, brine the leg for two weeks. Let it chill for a bit, smoke the leg. Um, heat it. Heat it till temperature. I think it needs to be get to like around 65, 70 degrees Celsius, which I think is 140 Fahrenheit. Um, and then after that, we're going to back seal it, hopefully, at the butchers. This, our back sealer won't deal with this. And then pull it out at Christmas time and glaze it. Take the skin off and glaze it at Christmas time.
I found a little bit of jarrah around the place um, that's a bit fractured. It can't be used for any building. Oh, it even smells good like that. <laughs> um, so I've actually broken some bits down. We've thrown them in the in the firebox here. We're keeping this um, fairly closely shut. We, you know, like if we open that up, it'll burst in the flames and things will get really hot. Yeah. Paskey's, uh, by some miracle, she managed to fit that enormous ham in the <laughs> in the firebox. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's an eight kilo ham. Eight kilo. We had it on brine for two weeks. We're not going to finish it in here, are we? So this is just to give it the flavour, the smoke? Yeah, we'll probably leave it in here for two hours to get smoky. Um, and then we'll just bring it into the kitchen and put it in the oven in there. Yeah. A low oven and just bring it to temperature. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's already getting a beautiful colour. Really great. Just look at you, Gate. Mm. It's doing good. Back to Mama. Back Mama's. to Mum. <laughs> it looks really great. It looks really smoky. It smells really smoky. Um, and I'm hoping that it will be delicious at Christmas time. <laughs> Just ignore the dog. She's pacing around the kitchen. She can smell the ham and she's very excited. So we're gonna put a probe thermometer in this. We're gonna pop it into an oven um, at about 150 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna cook it until it hits between 60 and 65, which is roughly um, 150 Fahrenheit. So we're just gonna cook it until it reaches that temperature. Hopefully it takes three or four hours because it's getting late now and I don't wanna to go to bed at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that was just the dog, she's excited. So let's do this. It's pretty cold in there. Okay, so even though the outside of this looks quite well done, the inside is still very much uh, a little over fridge temperature. It's at 13 degrees. So we're gonna be watching this in the oven this evening um, and just seeing if it creeps, getting it up to that 60, 65. The oven's on. It might not be cooked yet, but it smells pretty good. All right, Mr. Muscle, can you put the ham in? Not in the container, just put it straight in. Like, I've, I've, I'll put a tray underneath. Oh, okay. Because the container's too small. Yep. So Christmas time, I'll have to borrow someone else's roasting tin. Cool. We're gonna fish. Oh. I have to do the probe another way. There's the ham in the oven. Um, we've got a dangly thing hanging out. It's going to tell us the internal temperature as it cooks. Thank you to Jacob and Heidi, our friends, for sending us this. Um, it's probably it's taken us to a next level of being high tech. <laughs> if you if you watch this for any amount of time, you'll know that we're sort of uh, a little bit simplistic and you know things that we do. But we have been uh, donated this, and we've used it so often. Um, so. What are we looking for, Pasty, once it gets to 60? Uh, 65, I'd say, because you haven't poked it right in the middle because it didn't fit in the oven. Mm, done pretty good. Yeah. I'll let, I'll let you see, I'll stay out. I was just busy saying thanks to Jake and Heidi. <laughs> Jake and Heidi, thanks. We put that ham in the oven at about 7 o'clock at night and it was pretty cold inside. And it definitely wasn't ready or at temperature when we went to bed at about 11 p.m. So what? we did is we just left the oven running and fortunately that temperature probe, it has a little alarm on it. So once it hits 65, I programmed it so that once the internal temperature of the ham hit 65 degrees, the alarm would go off and that alarm woke me up at 3.30 in the morning. So I was able to just pull the ham out of the oven and turn the oven off. Um, we let it cool the next day and then the following day, I contacted the butcher to see if they could back seal it for us. Unfortunately, they couldn't do that. They said it was, um, they used to offer the service, but now with health regulations, they're not allowed to do um, meat that hasn't been processed in the butcher shop. So we just grabbed the ham leg itself. It looked the same as when it came out of the smoker, just the skin had retracted a little bit further back. Um, we'll show you everything when we unwrap it and glaze it 
at Christmas time. So you won't get full closure on the hand, but there's not long to wait now until Christmas. So I'll just show you what it looks like. It's in the bottom of our freezer here. It's wrapped in a lot of plastic um, glad wrap because we had no other way to stop it from getting freezer burn. It's such a big piece of meat that we couldn't really think of any other way to stop it getting freezer burn other than wrapping in a lot of glad wrap. So, so here's our ham right here. It's nice and heavy. I think it's pretty protected with its wrapping. The juices that came off the ham while it was roasting in the oven, we've saved here to add to the glaze. So we're going to peel the skin back. Um, we'll melt this down with some honey and some other things, and that will just get brushed on, and then we'll reheat this ham um, to a nice warm temperature for having at Christmas time with other things. So we'll bring you back to this when it happens in a month's time. And yeah, I'm just going to put it back in the freezer until Christmas. And the bacon tastes really delicious. Um, the only regret we have is that we didn't make enough of it. Uh, we're going to run out really, really soon, which is quite sad because we've only really been rich for bacon for a few weeks. But um, we did give away some to some important people in our lives, which felt really special. And um, I might fry some up now just to show you to show you how it fries up. It keeps it retains its color, so that nitrates work really well, and the flavor is just incredible. Um, definitely the best bacon we've ever made and all the better because we knew the pig. So yeah, it's been a really amazing experience and we look forward to making more in the fall, in the autumn next year. Another great byproduct of this bacon is that when you cook it, the fat renders out and then you have this delicious bacon fat left over for cooking with for other meals. It's really delicious, honestly. It's better than butter. So nice. So yummy. I realized that we hadn't actually filmed either of us eating our delicious bacon, so I thought I'd bring some out to you in the field. I have the undivided attention of a dog here. <laughs> we were worried that it was going to be too smoky, but it's really awesome. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no smell of vision in this world. Making that smoker was well worth the, the two afternoons I devoted to it. Mmm. It's so much better than store bought bacon. Everyone should have a go at making their own bacon. Even just once. Have you got the dog's opinion of it yet? Whoa, it's too good for dogs. Did you hear that yet? Shake. Camera shot. Camera dumb. Come here. Come on. Sit. Shake. Oh, good dog. You can tell when you've got something delicious because the dog gets all confused and just tries to go through all its repertoire to get the food as quick as possible. <laughs> get. Sit down. <laughs> good dog. Lucky dog. Mm. Well, as usual, if you sit long enough, you're surrounded by animals around here. Thanks everyone for watching this week and we will look forward to showing you our ham at Christmas time when that all happens and I'm sure our families are pretty excited to share in the spoils. If you're new to the channel we'd be really grateful if you subscribed. It helps get our channel out to other like-minded viewers like yourself. So thanks again and we'll see you next time.